we're going to work with the hips a little bit today, which is a little selfish because I, I need to work on my hips today after doing some kind of excruciating things. Um, so we're going to start seated. Just a quick come on down. So you're going to put your legs out in front of you. So there's a lot of different ways to turn your legs out and in. You can get it done often with the quads. So when we do standing adjustments, it's hard to not use the quads because we use the quads for almost everything that we do. So you can recline back and make yourself comfortable and you're just going to let your legs drop out to the side. You're going to steer your feet out and in. You just want to make sure that you're not moving the feet themselves. The feet are coming along because you're working up here, up in the hips. You're using your hip rotators, which are not the muscles down in front of your legs. They're, they're up higher. They're connecting the femur to the pelvis. So you're just going to kind of like practice that rotation. You can do one at a time. Make sure they can go separately. And you want to note if you have to bend, if the knee bends at all, you're trying to keep the legs straight. All right, so you're doing this turn. This right one tends to want to bend a little bit more. So I'm just going to pick up the leg now a little bit so it's not on the ground and turn it out and in. So here you are going to be using uh, your hip flexors and some of the quads will tense, but that shouldn't keep you from rotating, right? That's not what you're using to rotate. Same thing, you're going to lift. So you're really practicing turning the thigh out and in. Can you turn it in a little bit more than straight up? Can you go a little bit and make sure that you're not just going with the foot? that you're really going with the thigh. If you want to put your hands on your thigh to make sure that up here is turning, so just getting a little bit of that motion here. You can then flip over onto your back. If your hamstrings are tight, you can put your hands underneath them. For a little, we're not going to be here for very long. And you're going to do the same thing. You're turning the thighs. Legs are straight. If the hamstrings are tight, then maybe make fists which will give you a little bit more altitude, right? And you're practicing turning the thighs. The feet come along for the ride. The feet, like your feet aren't going first, trying to bring your thighs along. Your thighs are going and bringing your feet along. So you do both at the same time, which is great, but can you also do one at a time, making sure that you've got kind of a little bit more motor skill and you can kind of separate the two. Could you do one out and one in? and then the other one out and in without trying to not move the pelvis. This is all happening from the hips. Seems like a simple motion, but it can be, it's, can be challenging. All right, so we're going to do that, but we're going to add traction. So you're going to go ahead and stand up. When your foot is on the ground, your ability to use that rotator is going to be affected by the stiffness of the feet. So you're going to start with your feet pointing straight ahead. If you imagine like your feet are, like the width of your feet are like tires, you're just going to try to get them to point straight ahead. And you're going to turn your thighs out and in. It's the same motion that you were doing when your feet weren't connected. But when they are connected, when you turn the thigh, it's going to move the foot. It's going to move the ankle. It's going to move the shin. So one of the things that prevents you from using your hips fully is tense feet, right? If your feet don't move well, when you go to turn your hip, it doesn't go. So the foot can actually set the position of the thigh. So for now, let your foot, as you rotate out, let your foot flip up onto its edge and then let it come back down, right? So you're going to be moving just this thigh. You're looking at your hips. And you are the pelvis, and you want to make sure that when you turn your foot, that your pelvis isn't going, that it really is isolated here. So you're just practicing that motion. You can do one at a time. You can try the other side. So if, if it helps a little bit to get your weight towards one leg off of this leg, and then you go to rotate that thigh. We don't recruit from these muscles very well. We, we tend to be really dominant to the front of the thigh. And I'll show you from the side. If you tend to stand with your weight, boom, like forward, it's going to be hard to use the muscles of the hips. So that's why like our stance parameters of backing your hips up, those would kind of precede twisting your thighs. So it's really hard when your weight's forward and you're tensing your quads to then try to use your, your hips. So that's one of the reasons we have like backing up the hips as like that first step. So shift your weight back towards your heels and again, you're going back. 
So rotating the thigh, rotating the other thigh, rotating both thighs, right? Eventually your foot becomes so mobile that as you turn the thighs in and out, it doesn't really pull on your foot so much. What really displaces the foot is the stiffness within the foot. So eventually you go for this uh, foot mobility, different exercises than what we're doing right now, um, that allows your feet, like it, it kind of breaks up the relationship of your feet and your thighs. So eventually as you turn, you don't see as much foot motion. So let's mobilize the foot a little bit. Reach one foot back behind you and it goes over so that the, to the toes, the tops of the toes are on the floor. All right, as you do that, you're gonna feel, if you have never done this before, or if that's a particularly tight area, it cramps and you like tap out and then you can come back into it again. This is our kind of our first level foot mobilizer. And then you can practice when you're there, you can practice turning the thigh while you're doing the top of the foot stretch. Boom, yeah, good. butt cheek is killing me this week. <laughs> oh, all right, let me try the other side. All right, top of the foot. Look at, I've been in California, you can tell. It's like I'm wearing sandals even when I'm not wearing sandals. All right, so the top of the foot stretch is again, it's like our, it's our foot mobilizer. You have incredible mobility in, in, the, in really the front of the foot, from the midfoot to the front of the foot, really similar to like you're grabbing your fingers and bending them and twisting them relative to each other. But our feet have gotten really stiff. We don't use our feet as feet. We usually just put them in shoes. Um, and then practice rotating. So this is called external and internal rotation of this, of this thigh here. Mobilize. And then you can come back, weights back, remember that, weights back in your heels, and then you're gonna go back to rotating the thighs. And you wanna bring your feet about the width of your pelvis. Uh, really the width, like you have these bony points here, those are a good marker for the width of your ankles, right? So if you drop the plumb line from the front of your pelvis, this point, as you drop straight down, it should pick up your ankle. Eventually, it will pick up your knee, but that's not always the case at first. You could have a knee that falls to the inside. You could have a knee that falls to the outside. So for now, you line up the ASIS and the mid ankle, and then eventually over time, your knee is going to be pulled in so it falls straight. All right, so you're going to practice maybe just the left, just that rotation. You're also not clenching your butt. So try this. Clench your left butt cheek. Only your left. If you can like wink, it's like raising one eyebrow. Clench your butt cheek, and that will that will give a little bit of movement. But again, I don't want you to use your butt cheek either. You're not using your butt cheek. You're not using the front of the thigh. You're using the, the hip rotators. So the left butt cheek is going to tense, and you might even notice some tension in the quad. But that's the response to the movement coming from more at the hip levels, it's deeper. It's like right around the head of the femur and then try the other side. If you had to like really shift your weight off of it to move it, the next step would be to try to move it with your weight on it. I've never done really this one at a time. It's, kind of, cool. it's kind, of, kind of fun yeah. to, to break it up a little bit. And when you first start, let the feet flip up and flip down. If your feet, you have to have done a lot of foot mobility work to get them to be separate. And then, if you want to try and both at the same time, you can. If you put your hands on your butt, you're going to notice that as you turn the thighs, that the meat of your butt is like moving posterior. So, but, it, but you're not tensing your butt. You're not clenching your butt to make that happen. The butt responding is, um, the butt's response is again in response to the, the work that you're doing in the hip. So a lot of times I'll, I'll read or hear like just clench your butt to turn your thighs open, but then you just end up with like kind of like this repetitive tension. So instead turn it from deep into hips and then you will get the benefit. 
on the back side. Now, your kneecaps, your kneecaps, the kneecaps, you see how my kneecaps, there's two positions, up and down, clenched and relaxed. So the quadriceps can hold, when they tense, they'll lift the kneecap up, and when they relax, the kneecap will come down. So a good thing to add, first you want to get this skill, the ability to relax. It takes a while, it's not something that you can usually get within a class. But if you already have it, when you practice rotating, let's say you rotate out this left leg and hold it out, can you still lift and lower your kneecap when you're rotated out? That would be the next layer of skill for you to make sure that you didn't use your quads to do it. So a good way to see if you're using Using the hips or not using the quads would be, when you are turned out, can you lift and lower your kneecaps, maintaining the femur position? Or do you have to relax that position in order to relax the kneecaps? And that means that you're using more of the quads. So pair up rotating the thighs with relaxing the kneecaps, and then you'll know more that you're here. All right, and then we'll go back. 